Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in today's episode we will be talking about a unique tropical plant that I'd covered earlier, however due to popular demand, the garlic wine is back with a bang. In the previous video, I spoke a little bit about its care and back then, it was just a new arrival from the nursery. You can watch the old video by clicking on the link above. In this episode, we will be talking much more about this plant because it's been quite some time since I've had this plant and with all my observations done over time, I think I'm better placed now to talk about the nitty gritties of this plant and its care. So this plant is also called the Mansoa aliaceae, which belongs to the Bignoniaceae family to which the Pyrostegia vinista also belongs. This is a native of South America and by that you know that this is a warmth loving tropical plant which is definitely not cold tolerant. The most unique thing about this plant is that the flowers and the leaves of this plant smell like garlic when crushed. Hence it is also commonly called the false garlic plant. This is a tropical climbing flowering plant that can grow in tropical countries even in the wild. This is a robust plant that can grow really vigorously because of these strong tendrils that help this plant climb over any support it can get. Even if it is a tree next to it, it can take over that tree and bloom profusely. So if you want to save your other plants from the onslaught of these tough tendrils, then keep it controlled by pruning or by just using a dedicated trellis or a support. So this plant started blooming for me during the monsoon months, starting from July when the temperature dipped slightly. So you can safely say that this plant blooms during the rainy, colder months of the year in tropical countries. The plant blooms twice a year and the flowers also change their color over time. It starts off with a deep purple and white and then changes to a light lavender color which also looks absolutely beautiful. So this video of the flowers was taken previously and I remember those days when I was so impatient to post a video, I never took the time to give you an extensive look into my plants over time. Now I definitely believe that I need to take my time to cover every aspect of any plant in my garden to give you all the complete picture. Now talking about its uses, the flowers and the leaves of this plant are used in certain cuisines as a substitute for garlic. It is well known for its medicinal properties as well. It is anti-inflammatory and is used to treat cold and flu. So this plant that you see here has finished blooming and it's time to repot this into a bigger container. You can see how big and vigorous this has grown in this tiny container. So you can imagine how big this could grow in a big container or if grown in the ground. And look how the tendrils have tightly held onto this poor plant that I had to cut off this part and then remove it from its stranglehold. So now I will be removing this trellis which has become too small to contain this big plant. Now we will be removing the plant from this container. For this you can plough the soil on top and carefully remove the plant. For the repotting I am using this bigger container with a hole at the bottom. I will be using these broken pot pieces to cover the hole like this and for the potting mix I will be using a well draining mixture of 30% sand, 40% compost and 30% soil or cocoa peat. I will additionally add the old potting soil to make this plant feel at home all over again. Check the root ball and see if it has become pot bound. If so, break and disentangle few roots here and there. Check the level of the soil and add the plant and backfill. Here I must say that adding compost and lots of it will help with profuse blooming and this I am telling you by experience because this plant was grown in this small pot with 100% compost in it. Now add water and the repotting is done. Now let us look at the basic care conditions of this plant quickly. Sunlight. It loves full sunlight. The more the sun, the more it will bloom. Watering. If well established, it can tolerate some amounts of dry spell. But I would suggest you water this plant every day since it is quite a thirsty plant. Fertilize it with compost during the summer months to get more blooms. I don't see a lot of pests on this plant. Maybe because it has that garlicky smell that repels most pests. 
This can be propagated with the help of stem cuttings. And the most important thing to remember is to give this plant a support in the form of a trellis, a fence or like I've used here, a twine thread that I've tied onto my terrace hoping that it would grow taller and stronger giving me those blooms that can leave us all spellbound. Another top tip is that if given a trellis, this can grow bigger very soon. So with this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore. So if you like this video, then please like, share and subscribe. Also, do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. Thank you for watching Urbanscape Bangalore. And until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.